Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where today you join me to visit the garage of White S and White S Junior. And when we lift up those shutters behind me, inside are the two fastest production cars in the world. Let's get them open and have a look. It's time then for the doors to open to be greeted by the former record holder for the fastest convertible in the world, the Bugatti Grand Sport Vitesse, known as Whitesse, and the stable mate in the garage, the Koenigsegg Agera RS, now the fastest production convertible vehicle that money can buy, known here as the RS1. But these two cars with their Stormtrooper-like finishes with the white and black, the Koenigsegg being joined by the blue accents, are actually both cars that I have filmed with before in very different parts of the world. So I met with White S and White S Jr. about two and a half years ago to film with the Lork Blanc, as it's called, their Grand Sport Vitesse, out in Dubai in the Middle East, ahead of the Supercars Club Arabia event. And then more recently, I met with them again to film with the Agera RS1 over in London, the UK and Europe. So now seeing the two cars in their home habitat here in California, back at home together, is actually really quite fun for me, seeing them right here, side by side. Now we are talking about two exceptionally powerful cars. The Grand Sport Vitesse, 1,200 horsepower, 1,500 newton meters of torque. The Koenigsegg Agera RS with the one-to-one -one engine upgrade has 1,360 horsepower and 1,371 newton meters of torque. In the Bugatti, you've got an eight liter quad turbo W16. In the Koenigsegg, you've got a five liter twin turbocharged V8. Very different engines, very different weights. The Koenigsegg is a much, much lighter car. The Bugatti has this effortless sense when you're experiencing it and out for a drive. But the big thing, with both of these is how quickly they go when you remove their Targa roofs. So on the Grand Sport Vitesse, you have this large panoramic glass roof panel that can be lifted off and taken away from the car. And this car, or one like it I should say, reached a top speed of 254 miles per hour. That's 409 kilometers per hour. That stood as a record. They made a tribute car as well, known as the WRC, the world record convertible, until November 2017, when a Koenigsegg Agera RS, one of just 25 like this car, went even quicker on the public road here in the USA. So Bugatti had the advantage of their test track at Air Alessian in Germany. Koenigsegg brought a car to the road, shut it down, and reached a top speed of 278 miles per hour. That's 447 kilometers per hour. Now that is an average taken in both directions. The peak speed that the Koenigsegg Agera RS actually reached was 285 miles per hour, a top speed in kilometers of 458. Those numbers are quite frankly mind-boggling. Now the interesting thing about the Koenigsegg record is actually the previous record for outright top speed, which this car also took, has been held for nearly eight decades, since 1938 by the Mercedes W125 record wagon. So that held that record for nearly 80 years until this came along and actually took it back going near on 300 miles an hour and that's the crazy thing about this in a car where you can remove that roof panel and actually stow it away inside the front clamshell this opens up and the roof can be stowed inside now of the 25 Agera RS's many are fitted with the regular 1100 or so horsepower engine some have the upgrade to the one-to-one -one power plant the power plant that was introduced just for the seven Koenigsegg one-to-ones but what's interesting about this exact car is it has the low drag rear wing. Now the record holding car had the higher drag rear wing, more so more focus for the track that comes out of the rear deck. So this would actually be faster. This is the quickest configuration Koenigsegg they've ever made. So the RS1 right here would potentially be, if it went for a run, the fastest car in the world, having stolen that record from the Grand Sport Vitesse. Now what I'm gonna do next is a bit of a how-to to take the roof panels off the two fastest cars in the world. I don't think this has been done before, but we're gonna get started with the Bugatti. So I've got the key 
because there are a few stages to this process. Now the roof panel on the Bugatti, given that it's basically glass, is actually quite heavy. So you need two people with two hands on either side to make sure that you're holding it properly. To make things a touch easier, we're gonna put the windows down because you have to access this button, one on each side, and then remove the roof panel towards the front of the car. You could technically carry it around the rear, but it's sitting in the handling mode right now with the wing up, we've got some spare tires there at the back, so getting around the back is a little bit awkward. So we're gonna go around the front. So what I need to do is put the key in the ignition to put the windows down. Key is just over the other side of the steering wheel. Turn that a notch. Then we've got the buttons here to lower the windows. So with the windows down, let's just take the key back out. Pop it for the moment in the center console right there and close the door. And then we're gonna press these buttons, very firm press, and it basically pops up the back on each side. It's held in by some pins at the front. And then we'll take it towards the front of the car, bring it around, and mount it on this wall panel. So literally, it will clip onto these pins either side and hold in place there while you go take the car out for a drive. So to do this, I'm actually gonna have to pop the camera down just over here and delicately use the roof, the PPF roof, I will point out, of the Koenigsegg to show you how exactly we're gonna do this. So, time to get this roof panel removed. Let's get it right. Now the first part of this then is this button right inside, which you have to push very firmly. Oh, there we go. Well, you lift up the roof panel. So, now that that's released, you literally now walk out of the way of the car, and I promise you we're coming back, but we've got to get over the front of the bonnet, pivot it that way around, and then bring it back round delicately without hitting the car at all. Hi there, we've got a roof of the player on Grand Sport. And mount it on here. You know what? That wasn't too bad. Now we have the Bugatti in all of its convertible glory ready to be enjoyed. Now there is actually one more part to this process. So opening up the front hood will reveal this Bugatti badge pouch inside which contains the wind deflector. So inside here is a three part piece that will be connected together and then installed on the top windscreen edge to obviously divert some air around and give the occupants a slightly more pleasant experience. So in here you have these three different parts which will be connected and then installed into place. So they literally snap together, twist and connect and then the one part for the other side before this whole panel can then go onto the car. So to actually be able to put it into place, there are two other parts that need to be opened as well. To either end of the overall panel, you need to press a button just to open those flaps. And this then, much smaller and lighter piece, will simply be connected into place using those same pins where the main roof itself came out from, and then literally snapped down and held in place, giving you basically a cleaner and smoother finish across the front windscreen. So all that's left to do now is close up this pouch in the bonnet, put it away, and there you have your convertible Bugatti Veyron. Simple. The special thing then about the Agera RS is that the carbon fiber roof panel gets stowed away inside the front clamshell. So you can take it with you just in case it starts raining, you can actually put it on. Now there is available for the Bugatti, a kind of fabric roof that you can store away and that would then go onto the car as well. But let me talk you through this process, which is actually slightly more complex. Now, firstly, to open the door on a Koenigsegg, if you're not familiar, there is a button down here, which is very clever because the door itself opens like this on a very multi-way axis, opening up in a rather clever fashion to reveal the interior, which in this car is absolutely lovely. Now, if I just take a step inside the passenger side of the Agera RS here, where we're greeted by the lovely Koenigsegg key in the shape of the crest, I really actually quite like that an awful lot. I can talk you through the process. So there are a series of five clips. You have to press a button and bring these down, which are really quite stiff. So three of those around the front, if I can just get this, there we go. And then there are two more behind. So we've got one just here, which is gonna be a bit awkward for me to do on camera, but to actually access those in the first place, we need to power it up to control the seats because the seats are electronically controlled via the system in here. So you can select driver side or passenger side, select the base and move it forwards so that we can access the panels behind. So I will just do this for a moment, power it back off and jump out so we can reach those clips. Now then, we can access back here where the clips can be found up on the roof. That was actually quite a lot easier. 
come around to the other side because we also need to open up the front bonnet. So with this door again, button down here, the window drops slightly just to make that process a little bit smoother. And then interestingly, when you then open the bonnet itself, which is done right the way under here, they'll drop all the way down to prevent the windows getting hit when you then open the clam up. So we need to get this last little catch here. There we go, all five open. Now when we then lift that off, we can bring it much lighter, it only needs one person to carry it and put it inside the bonnet here. So there's another catch. I think I'll leave my right hand for this just inside here. There we go, that's quite significantly heavier. And in the front, you have this very beautifully shaped area surrounded by carbon fiber where the roof can go inside the bag. You lift these up, which are for rain. Now you shouldn't have rain coming through if you're taking the roof off and then put the roof in the bag, tuck it in and it all fits perfectly. To make this a touch easier, we will close the doors back now. Because what we need to do next, basically, is release the roof panel, which we do in a few little bashes. There we go. So I'm going to try and delicately take all of this. I've got it. And there we go. One carbon fibre Koenigsegg roof with a glass panel. Then we need to get around to the front. The next thing then, getting this inside the bag. So the bag has to go the right way round. <laughs> so, that goes on, it's naturally shaped the right way, oh god. <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. Is it this part? It? it zips, okay, and then we can hold it technically yeah. with the handles. Put it on the floor. Put it on the floor? Yeah. Gently does it. Okay. There we go, just pull it up a bit more. Ah, it has these protection pieces on the corners. Mm -hmm. You can see that. This folds over and Velcro is on the front. And uh, basically oh, nice. pick up. Then we go this way around. I believe it goes... Upside down. Like yep. Yeah, it's definitely upside down. And then, in theory, it should just slide into the gap that we have opened in the car. And then you just give it a little wiggle and it should slide in to the front of the car. Magic! And it's perfectly shaped. Done. I guess we can now close this down. Delicately doing it. And then there is two little clips, one on each side. There we go. All done. Convertible curve today. And just like that, you have two convertible hypercars. Now it does have to be said, they are both a little bit fiddly, but if you think about it, these are cars that are built to go in excess of 250 miles per hour. That's no easy feat. I think between them, you'll find you're able to do the Bugatti one ever so slightly faster. So even though the Koenigsegg may be a quicker car, you'll be playing catch up from the word go if it's about taking the roofs off before you start. Now I think the treat that we've left until the end is to experience starting them both up to hear the engines running with the roofs open. So let's step in here where you've got these dual intakes behind your head, although I'm led to believe that driving in the Koenigsegg roof off, you get a lot more noise coming in through the scoop back there. But two totally different engine sounds. In any case though, Lorc Blanc first, the one of one Grand Sport Vitesse with its 1,200 horsepower coming from that eight litre quad turbo W16. So in we step, we've got the key, put it in, turn the key, and then in the center here, you have the start button. Are you ready to hear it? Into life we go. Wow. Raw grumble. The sense of power and strength. And that's what's so amazing about this car, is the ease with which it drives. From experience, it's effortless in its nature. It just wafts away. It doesn't feel like it's ever having to work hard yet it pushes you into the back of the seat as the acceleration rate is just phenomenal. Sounds pretty cool though. So what will the Koenigsegg sound like in comparison? That feeling then when you step out of a Bugatti to go and step into a Koenigsegg Agera RS. It is a big thanks to White S and White S Junior that we're shooting this today and able to come and have a look and explore these extraordinary cars. So again, 
a keyless system in here, the key staying in the center console. But let's step in. We put the seats back from taking the roofs off. This is a much more awkward car to get into because of the way you have the uh, pillar here from the windscreen and just a wider sill to actually have to step over in the first place. But we'll climb in and make our way into the car, which is fitted with the full digital display. So here we go. Engine start. Are you ready? we go that is that for now so then the awkward task of climbing back out over this side sill which I can just about manage yep there we go job complete so between the two how do you decide which is your favorite between the Bugatti and the Koenigsegg what's it going to be then that dethrones the fastest car in the world how long is it going to be until we have a car that can do 300 miles per hour, a production car that can still be driven by the likes of you and I on the public road. It seems like a ridiculous prospect, but it can't be that far away. Will it be a future Koenigsegg? Their later model, the Regera, is actually limited to 250 miles per hour due to the way it's a hybrid and the electronics switching off at that speed. Of course, Bugatti have more recently released the Chiron and the Devo, but in both cases, I think they're limited to a top speed, the Chiron to 420 kilometers per hour and the Devo to 380, so a fair whack still to go on top of that. What about the likes of Hennessy with the Venom F5? That's a possible contender. John Hennessy is aiming for 300 miles per hour. All I know for now is that these two are epic, epic cars, each in their own right, and it's a pretty amazing thing for White S and White S Jr. to have them sitting side by side here in the garage, both in fantastic specifications, beautiful looking cars, and even more so when their roofs are removed, a process that you may not have seen before now so I hope that's been of interest to see I hope you've enjoyed this video seeing the two cars hearing the two cars so a big thanks again to White S and White S Junior links down below over to their Instagram page but thank you very much also to you guys for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you again with plenty more very very soon cheers